I'm Frank Spizer, co-founder of Social Flow. You know, we started Social Flow to give the customer the audience you want by marketing on social. We kind of started Social Flow by accident. We wanted to promote a podcast, and next thing you know, here we are. I'm Mike Brown, a general partner at AOL Ventures and an early investor in Social Flow. We were really excited about the changing nature of marketing spend within corporations. You had started to see this shift towards social media budgets and social media spend, and Frank was just super passionate about the concept. We really got behind his excitement about it and invested in the company. He sees a bunch of other companies trying to do things a bunch of different ways, and you can sort of use them as a sounding board to say, like, you know, I've seen this work out, and I've seen, I've seen this not work out. A lot of the advice and hard work that I did with Frank early on was prospecting who the good customers might be, and then actually helping pitch alongside the founder. Most startups face this issue of, I can't get taken seriously most of the time, so if you're not able to deliver on that promise and you do scale very, very quickly, it can result in a lot of negative stuff for you. We waited a little too long, I think, to start scaling our sales organization because we were more worried about the product and fitting the need for the customer. So you can also grow too slow. And now we're actually catching up, but the benefit of doing it the way we did it versus trying to grow too fast is like, there's not a lot of obstacles and not a lot of friction in the way now. You don't have to sell the future, you just sell a fix to a current solution and keep adding in products that get people better along that way. I think that's a better way to do it. And I'd rather do that than grow a giant company that didn't do what it was supposed to do. They're able to scale faster and smarter. And as long as they're building the appropriate foundation for growth, they really can attract capital in a much better way. I'd say the biggest failure I see with companies is a lack of that foresight by the CEO to really understand that he will not necessarily be the primary seller. That's fine very early on in a company. However, it really limits your ability to step away from selling and be the CEO. Your job as a founder is like realizing what you're good at and you know, where, you feel your, where you fill out your team. As an entrepreneur that does product development, develop product. Right. I think that's the point. Well, and I for, think you're a rare founder in that you've expanded your role to wear many hats and now have realized, actually, I don't know if I really want to do that. So you're like, look, let me just build the product and, and work with the technology. You got to be willing to do it as long as you can, as fast as you can, but then when you get to a point where you can actually make those type of decisions, so you just got to be realistic and say, all right, like, you know, this person's going to be better at this than I am and therefore better for the company and therefore better for the people in the company. We're successful because we've looked at things a different way and have been willing to disregard the way we've been told to view social marketing and the way the industry works. It can be felt all the way through to the customer. I think it's pretty unique.